this lesson is an introduction to turbochargers, thinking about the effect they have on performance and their principle of operation, and also a brief look at the system construction. The function of a turbocharger, or the effect that a turbocharger has on performance, is that it allows the aircraft and the engine to maintain full power with, it, uh, with increasing altitude. Down here then, we have the sea, this is sea level. And at sea level, the air density is quite high, the air pressure is quite high because it's being compressed by the weight of all the other air above it. If we climb to 10,000 feet, the air density, the air pressure begin to fall because now there's less stuff above it compressing the air. Up to 15,000 feet, and the pressure and density fall even more. The problem here is that an engine breathes this air effectively. And at sea level, it's breathing quite nice, dense air, so it produces full power. But as it goes up in altitude through these layers of less dense air with lower pressure, it struggles to breathe a bit more. It can no longer produce full power. This problem is solved by a turbocharger because the turbocharger, for every one of these altitudes, is able to compress the air back to sea level density. Because the engine can produce full power when it breathes air, which is sea level density, the engine can now produce full power at any of these altitudes. There is a limit to this though, and this limit is our critical altitude. The critical altitude is the altitude above which the turbocharger can no longer compress the air back to sea level density. Once more, here's our C, 10,000, 15, but also now 20,000 feet. So from the diagram before, we saw that sea level has nice dense air, 10,000 feet gets a bit less dense, 15,000 feet less dense again. But this isn't a problem because our turbocharger just compresses all of this air back down to sea level pressure. The aeroplane goes up now to 20,000 feet where the air is incredibly thin. The turbocharger has a problem because at this altitude it can't compress the air back to sea level pressure. It can only compress it a little bit, maybe back down to the pressure you'd feel at 10,000 feet. Because the engine is no longer breathing this sea level pressure air, it can no longer produce full power. The critical altitude itself, the exact value depends upon the engine and turbocharger installation and climbing above it will always see a fall in the maximum possible manifold pressure and maximum possible power as well. The turbocharger system works like this. Within the air intake towards the engine, there's a compressor wheel. And the job of this compressor wheel is to compress the air coming in back down to sea level pressure so it spins and it spins at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of RPM. This compressed air is then fed into the cylinders of the engine. And the gases which are expelled are sent through a turbine wheel. Those gases spin this turbine wheel and the compressor and turbine are connected by a shaft. As the turbine wheel spins, it drives this compressor wheel over here. And that compressor wheel is what compresses our air. The faster the turbine spins, and that speed is proportional to the speed of the engine, so the harder the engine works, the faster the turbine goes. As that goes faster, our compressor wheel goes faster as well. So the harder the engine's working, the higher the maximum possible manifold pressure is within the engine. There is a limit to this and this limit is observed on our overboost light in the cockpit. This light's on the uh, instrument panel and it illuminates when the manifold pressure rises above a certain value. When this overboost light comes on, it means that the compressor wheel is working too hard. It's compressing the air to too high of a value. As soon as you see this light come on, your immediate response is to retard the throttle, reduce the amount of power, because as you reduce that power, the turbine wheel spins more slowly, which reduces the speed of the compressor wheel, which reduces the pressure inside of the intake manifold. 
That's a brief introduction to turbochargers, looking at the effect on the uh, performance as well as the system construction and how they work. In the full course, we go and look at how to use the turbocharger in the aircraft, all the way from takeoff to shutdown. So go and have a look at that.